Hello and welcome to The Shakedown. Our mission is to inform people about how the criminal justice system works, the real people impacted by the justice system, and methods to improve justice through compassionate and casual conversation. Hosts of The Shakedown share over 50 years of combined personal experience dealing with Texas prisons and working to change the criminal justice system. And now, here's our show. Welcome to The Shakedown. And today I have a special guest with me, someone else fr- that I, another Stringfellow alumni, uh, Mr. Brandon Edwards. Hello. Welcome to the hey. show. How's it going, man? Long time no see. <laughs> yes. Um, Brandon and I were on the, uh, the Stringfellow trustee camp together. And um, we spent a bunch of time going back and forth to the um, to to the Stringfellow unit from the trustee camp back and forth. Um, and Brandon worked at the library, and I was going back and forth for the Jewish program. So, um, in honor of that, I thought we would talk a bit today about books and about getting books into the unit which also involves a bit about um, every inmate's favorite topic, the mailroom. So, uh, yeah, first, (laughs) yes. Um, The first, Brandon, what was it like for you working uh, in the prison library and maybe give people just a general idea of what the library was like? I mean, the library is the best job you could have. You like, you know, 90% of the day, you're either just hanging out reading or you're stock, like restocking the shelves, fixing the shelves uh, with, you know, where we were at a lot of times, anytime like our boss was there, because he was only there two days a week, we would go through and like figure out what the next books to order were, like what's going to be, what everyone's looking for and stuff like that. Or... <laughs> laminating whatever she had that she wanted laminated but you know like uh when it came time to like actually running library it could get a little like went like we went through different processes of running the library a couple different times so it was like at first we had to get everyone's book for them and you had like you you'd have you know 30 people lined up or crowded around trying to figure out what book they wanted uh, or if we had a book that they wanted and trying to just, it was hectic. It was a pain in the butt. Uh, eventually they opened it up so that everyone just go pick their own book. And then that just had its own little level of nightmares when it came to, you know, the people that you have the people that can't read very fast that they want to check the same book out for like two months. And then you got the other group, the other side of the coin where it's, I need three books. What do you mean? I only get like, at the time it was one. And then they bumped it up to like, you could get two books. And so it was like, I need more. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And then the, uh, the people that would try to like slide in and hit, hit the library like two, three times in a week. And then arguing and like getting mad when like the computer would tell them no. Or I would tell them no. I was the library a hole. <laughs> yes. Library book and Nazi, a lot of people- library Nazi, just that library cop, whatever. It's like, do what you're supposed to do. Don't rip up the books. Don't write in the books. Don't cut anything out of the books. Don't steal the books. And that was unbelievably popular. All of the above was like you would you'd show me all the time, all of the people like cutting and writing in the books. And because people would just find art in the book they like. And since they couldn't draw it themselves, either the, the nice ones would just 
draw hard press as hard as they could to trace it if they were yeah, nice they about it so you could see that right uh, using a pencil just hard pressing it but the it, but if they weren't people weren't even trying to draw it they just cut it out of the book and then turned the book back in mm-hmm. which was yeah there's a lot of too that. often uh like the ones that always just like people that would just sit there and they would write you know all their notes and stuff and it's just like nobody wants to read all that or uh my favorite was people that you'd have uh you know like a lot of the like some of the religious people like that would sit there and be like if the word devil was anywhere in the book they're erasing that or editing out cuss words and it's just like come on Go work in the library. Go work in the mailroom. You can put it on the banned b- list of books. It says the F and word that, three times. Right. And um, last night I was actually, um, I was talking about, like, I was looking at the banned book list. I was trying to find out what, like, once again, find out what books were on the banned book list. And... Um, I found out Goodreads actually has a Texas prisons banned book list reading list, but it's only like 30 books. So it's not the full list. list Yeah. And, but it has some interesting titles like, and and I'm sure all of these are on the list, but it has like a raisin in the sun. It has, um, let's see. Um, it doesn't have the 48 laws of power, which all Texas inmates know are ban- is banned. Yeah. Um, it had Dante's Inferno. You could have a photocopy which I, sent in, but. For, yeah. <laughs> that was a one, one way around it. Around. I, and um, there was basically a lot of the books I was looking at them, a lot of them was like. Um, one a few of them were like rape survivor help guides and like you can't have that because it details a crime so mm-hmm. it gets banned no, it, it <laughs> so has rape. You're... there's rape in it therefore it's banned right and then um i remember one book that that wasn't on the goodreads list that i tried to get in was about a um a guy who was a thief who then turned into a, who decided to become a rabbi? That book was banned because it had uh, it talked about a guy committing a crime, so mm-hmm. it got banned. But then I'm thinking about all of the Christian literature that had the exact same thing, but they turned into a preacher, and that makes it in just fine. Or like God's Not Dead, that I was forced to watch in the God Pod at Stringfellow. <laughs> which ends in a giant car crash, which was <laughs> freaking awful. <laughs> yeah. So um, sorry, spoilers on that one. But See, yeah, I, I don't remember, you know, uh, like depicting crime ever being one of the reasons for being banned. It would be like uh, if it like laid out the plans of committing a crime. Oh, but possibly fall how to commit that. it. Because, like, the book Cherry is about a guy who, you know, started robbing banks to, like, cover his, like, opioid addiction and stuff. And it's written by a guy who's locked up for those crimes. And so, like, that one was in there. And it goes to, like, he's robbing in banks left and right. Okay. But, like, any... uh, But because because he never detailed how to lay out, do the crime, it didn't... It, it didn't get banned. Yeah, I don't remember, like, how much detail it went into, like, the planning of it or anything like that. But, like, it was a decent book <laughs> for a first-time <laughs> author. <laughs> but, I mean, like, yeah, it was just, you know, some rough stuff on, you know, just addiction and just crazy levels of just making really dumb, like, getting away with really dumb mistakes trying to like rob a bank and just like somehow getting away with it anyway. Well, and then there's that whole, there was a whole urban fiction drama, which I didn't even know was a a genre about like being like basically glorifying being a gangster and money, like just 
modern day money, sex, yeah. drugs, all of that, and basically, the, uh, and you win. You're you're uh, hip hop gangster rap in one book in a book, right? Like a lot of sex, a lot of drug dealing, uh, you know, some gang violence stuff. They're typically more geared toward like the romance section. There were some that were more. Um, like definitely more like romance than like it was uh instead of being like like gangster urban it was just like kind of more like black community urban kind of thing like uh like carl weber some of those are you know like the the, the tyler perry of urban fiction kind of feel <laughs> <laughs> i can only imagine tyler perry urban fiction what that would look like I mean, it, it would be one of his scripts. That's that would that would fall into the category. Yeah, I guess I could I could definitely. But then see you that, had some of the other point. ones that were all like it was just gang banging, beating beating heads, pimping, everything like that. Uh, and a couple of the ones that we had in the library were written by one of the inmates on the unit. Oh wow! I did not know that. Like he That's was awesome. he was like, he had about three or four novels out there. Like that were published and everything like that. I was just like, wait, this is you. All right, good job. Yeah, and that the urban fiction has its own publishing companies. So yeah, I could I could see that's pretty awesome. That and that's just street cred right there coming straight out of Stringfellow to have that. Yeah, that the urban urban fiction novels constant like they were out all the time, wait lists to get them. Uh, most of the supernatural romance novels, those were always out. Uh, and then you'd have like, like anything like David Wong, uh, like some of the more Brent Weeks fantasy, like, like sci-fi fantasy stuff, uh, always out. And then anything with like photos constantly out. Oh yeah. That is true. And not and I also remember any graphic novels are like next mm-hmm. to impossible to get. And, and that's you always hooked me up with the new ones coming in, but that was that was yeah, hard no, I didn't. to get. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. No, yeah. I was checking Even those book, out to read them. You just snagged them out of my boat. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but, that was my side hustle. Yeah. Which books you want? <laughs> I just, I'm like, walking back I, with a sack of books. <laughs> and, and it's a good one. It's that's a good one to have. And that's so, I've talked about it on the show. Is every that was the perk of having a job. It was like that you every job had a perk and you took to advantage it. You of just it. Because, figure out what your hustle is. Yeah, you were. Everyone, everyone wanted my hustle to be glue and tape, but I was like, I use those. Like, maybe the glue, but the tape, I'm not giving up the tape. I need that. That's an interesting thing about hustling that people didn't, like, a lot of inmates didn't quite understand. And this is why they couldn't have the jobs, the, the, like the nice premier job or cushy jobs. They didn't understand. You can make money off the job, you can find a hustle. It's Just not the obvious rich. hustle, right? Don't try and get rich and don't like if you steal everything from it, the place on the first day, you're going to get fired and mm-hmm. you'll never be able to work in a cushy job again. The guy who gets the job is the guy who finds something that doesn't bother the boss. She might even be in on it. She might know, like know what's going on. And like that's and you find a way that it works for benefits everyone it's don't you don't go in there and immediately just take a whole big stack of paperwork or tape or pens or like very important like stuff you're going to need every day. Yeah. Yeah, but especially like, don't, yeah, like, don't run off with a whole packet of laminate when your boss wants you to laminate just everything and anything. I made this sign laminated. Yeah. I cut this picture out laminated. <laughs> right. Yeah, that would be yeah exactly. Uh, I mean, and that was the whole thing. And leave enough room for your coworkers to be able to hustle too. If you're stepping on everyone else's toes, uh, 
like they're gonna they're gonna like you know either help you get caught if they don't just outright like tell somebody to like look he's taking shit. They will. T- I mean, even on the best of scenarios, they're probably going to turn on you at some point. So you have to like you got to try and form ally, like at least try to form allies and try and keep keep them off because someone sometimes they're going to be stupid. Sometimes they're going to like if you can get them at like if you can each look out for each other. Awesome. Amazing. It's one less person. I was, you have to, I was blessed with like all the back. coworkers that I had for the library. Perfect. Martinez, uh, Tran, and then uh, Anderson. Great guys. That one guy they had up there they, for a little while. I was really glad when he never came back. Yeah, and I, I remember that. It was so much. It got much calmer when he left. And, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, you know, threatening to cut him anymore. <laughs> uh, he, he got on my nerves to the point where, like, he literally came up and, like, I, I, I was talking crap from across the room. And he goes, what did you say? And I just raked the back of his hand with the back of a uh, razor. And he was just like, I was like, come at me. I will cut you. I, yeah, it, one, I, it's, I, it's hard to express, like, for, for anyone who's had shitty coworkers, just being, imagine being locked in a room with a shitty coworker at, for several hours. Most annoying or, like, just irritating person you've ever worked with, just you're stuck in... Like, hopefully as big as, the, like, the library wasn't, like, a giant, but at least it was, you know, 60 by 40, 80 by 40, maybe more. I, I don't Somewhere know. I have like, the blueprints from when we, like, redid the everything, but I don't remember. The library, yeah, because, so that was the other thing. The library had, like, four tables out front, right? Like, it had four tables that people could sit at inside the library. There was a block and then there was the bar and then there's the books behind the bar so that you or martinez could get the books and Mm -hmm. that and like that's a thing a lot of people aren't going to understand so that was the original setup like when when i started working there that was the setup because we had to get the books for everyone and so they would have the classes come in there as a group and sit around and so they had to have the tables there for everyone to be at. And then when they switched it over so that everyone could go in and get their own books, they kind of did away with the table system for the most part entirely because we moved the, the desk over by the door and it was just, that's the desk and then go get your own book and bring it here. Like Dalhart had actually had it set up like a where you could go in and walk. There's the books on the shelves and everything. Yeah, the open library plan. Yeah, you were on a timer though. You had like five minutes. Go in, oh, yeah, get we your didn't book. Have a timer. We had people that like that would be in there. So it's like, hey, like we we want to go home. Like, we want to go back to the dorm and eat. Like, get a book, go. And then when they when they gave us that TV, yeah, that was it for any kind of work during the day. They put a Imagine. TV in the library, and we were just like, not doing anything. <laughs> like, the other yeah, thing was, like, but- uh, we could, like, so I could have, like, we would get the lists of what books got added to the banned book list, like, newer releases, like, every, like, month or whatever. We would get the list of, like, these are not going to be allowed in. And so if it was a book that was already on the shelf, we could at least go and like either redact the the page, like the information that was the, the reason to ban it or remove the entire page and just do it that way. Uh, so we didn't have to like, like the book was still available. You just wouldn't have that one section. Whereas with the, uh, the mail room, you're not getting that book whatsoever. If the book was already on the shelf, we could redact, like either like 
like go through the sharpie and like eat, like blank out whatever the the offending information was, or oh, okay. remove the whole page. Whereas if it goes through the uh, the mail room, they just don't give you the book at all. Yeah, they don't. Get, so it could you could potentially have a banned book in the library, but it has like something redacted in the book. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Like I, that's like any time that she told us that you know we have to pull these books and get rid of them. Like I like we only threw threw books away the first time we ever did that, and then after that I was like, um, can I just black that out? And so she called, and they're like, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah, the librarian, um, I didn't see her too much, but she was super, she was awesome. Miss Smith was, um, was live. She was good. Yeah. And, uh, but like that, what, um, but yeah, so going through the mailroom and getting books was the other way you could get books, if not through the library. So having your people send you um, books. Uh, in the mail and like you said if it got on the banned books list or if it was on the banned books list you were not getting that book um period now the way it gets on the banned books list is it goes in the mail room and then someone from that prison's mail room says oh this should be this book shouldn't be allowed and if you don't appeal it it's on the banned books it goes to the banned book list um and the and other the mail, option, like a lot of the time, it, the mailroom will tell you to appeal it every time, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And you should. You should always, uh, if for any inmates or families listening out there, always appeal um, if you if you can, because if you do not want your book to immediately go on the banned books list just because your mailroom won't appeal it, will you get your book um, anytime soon? No. Absolutely, there is no way that is happening. No, it's as a soon as your mailroom, because like, so. uh, yeah. like on like on on Stringfellow, they they were blocking the like SI swimsuit edition, and that was an allowed issue. So they you had to appeal it, and then it was like I think five weeks, and you would get it. Like it would never leave the unit; it would stay there. They would just basically like in Huntsville, they would look at one of the ones they have and just be like, that's fine. Right. And I actually, there's only been one time where I've done an appeal and actually did get turned around quickly. And I actually have it here. It is this bad boy. (laughs) It was my sociology textbook, my sociology 101 textbook. Uh, And Um, This textbook, I mean, it's great information in this textbook. This textbook, um, when it arrived on the unit, it it got denied. It was in a binder. Because as you can see, yeah. Well, because of these, because there was, it did not have these when it came in. There was no binding at all. It just came as a big thing of paper. And I... And I appealed it, and I just I told them, it's not paper. They said, you can't receive loose-leaf paper in the mail, which is, in fact, a rule. I'm like, but it's not loose-leaf paper. It's a textbook. I'm like, why the hell would you send me a textbook as just individual pages? It's like... Because that's the cheaper option in, at most schools. It is. It is a cheaper option. And I could see being in college, just buying a binder and getting, you know... Instead of paying three hundred dollars for a textbook, you know, paying fifty for this or whatever, mm-hmm. that's a good deal. But, um, yeah, you can't do that in prison, especially in a correspondence course. And so that kind of sucked a whole lot. And then I made the binder rings for this. And then I and then to when I was had access to the furniture factory and I had access to some really good stuff, I made a pretty cool binding for the next time that happened. That, so, was, that was another one of our lucrative hustles in the library was finding books. Like you could bring us a stack of whatever and between me and Martinez, we could turn that into a hardcover book from using hardcovers from books that we had already like 
had to destroy and throw out for being just too damaged. And that was legit. You guys made some really good hardcovers. I had actually, I had learned some of, I was doing some of the things to hardcover some of my books because, and here's another example. This bad boy. Yeah, this is just hold together by, I don't even know. These are like stickers from the mail. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. I hated whenever somebody would like, they would bring a, like a comic book or a magazine and be like, Hey, can you fix this? And they had used either deodorant tape or anything else to like mm -hmm. tape stuff together. And it was just like, don't ever use tape. It's just going to like, it, it's a nightmare to take off to fix. And then it's just, right. it just never holds. It doesn't work. You have to have no, glue. This is the fact. Yeah. The fact that this is held as long as it has, I am amazed. And, the, and it also did not hold in all of the pages. I had to eventually use glue to hold in some of the pages. And as you can see, the cover is still flying off. Like, so yeah and and the reason i had like the reason i ha still have this book and the reason i still i um taped it up to begin with is this was another one of my college textbooks and it's a pretty it's an awesome one it teaches you how to figure out latin and greek roots of words and memorize the like important ones so like you can either a, like when you hear a word for the first time, you can be like, oh, I think that kind of, you can kind of guess the definition of it. Or mm -hmm. you can just make up words using Latin and Greek, which is just, that's fun too. I mean, yeah. Elon Musk does it, so I might as well <laughs> hang with him. Definitely. Uh, like some of the annoying stuff that happened while I was, you know, like one of my friends, he had all of the all but the last two or three Soul Eater uh, uh, mangas. And so he finally ordered the last three, and in the interim time between those, they had banned the series. Oh, wow. That sucks. So it was like, but I have them. I just need those three to finish it. They did the same thing with me for Why the Last Man. I have the whole Why the Last Man here. Last one, actually the last two were in the mail and they banned it. And they banned it. Not only they, I, when they got mine in the mail, they banned it. They put it on the banned books list. So yeah, I was like, like some great. of the reasons for banning books are kind of ridiculous because like you'll you'll see a book that's not banned and you can skim through it and you're just like this is atrocious and it's like this is banned because of like one was you know it de it described the uh makings of a bomb and it's like okay i understand that if it's like a chemical bomb that we could possibly put something together but it's literally dynamite a freaking you know alarm clock and it's just like where am i getting dynamite in prison come on now yeah it's well that and it's also we're inmates are already figuring it out like we we had already figured out how to do a lot of the things on our own and you can't it's like trying to prevent us from having weapons and also demanding that we be clean shaven all the time. Like you can't have, if you're going to give us razors, then someone is going to use razors to cut people. Like if that's, and so you, it's one or the other. And there's going to, at some point, really anything is going to be able to be used as a weapon period. Like and even it, that's just around, kind of funny because anytime like the guards come in and it's like, you need like, I'm going to cut this line down. Somebody give me a blade. Who's got an open blade? Give me one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah, they don't. 
There have been plenty of times officers have just asked the inmates, hey, can you, can someone please give me a blade to do, yeah, cut cut an, another inmate's line down yeah. who's saying laundry. I, I, and I don't think they know even know what they're asking. Hand me your contraband like, to cut down this contraband. Who, who's going to offer that one up? I think that's a good place to, to wrap it up is... Um, Brandon, what are you up to now? What's going on with you? Or anything you want to tell people about? Uh, been out for two years. Um, just pretty much I'm either at home, uh, watching movies, playing video games, uh, started learning how to solder, um, so working on different electronics and stuff like that. Uh, you know, where I'm at work. You can find Shakedown merch, graphic novels, and other projects at waywardpress.com. That's W-A-Y-W-O-R-D press.com. If you would like to support The Shakedown, get exclusive content, and watch episodes live, you can support us at patreon.com slash the shakedown. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment to give Malone that inner peace he so richly deserves.